You know what your cholesterol levels are? Do you know HDL from LDL? Well, you should. It could spare you from coronary heart disease or even save your life. Here to tell us about cholesterol and how to manage our levels is local doctor Mag Zacharis. And, and welcome. Good morning to you. Zacharias, I'll get it right there. <laughs> I was looking at all these good things that I know that are bad for us. <laughs> um, first of all, HDL versus LDL. What's the good cholesterol? What's the bad cholesterol? Yeah, the HDL is the good component of your cholesterol. The cholesterol is how fat travels in the bloodstream. We have our LDL where most of fat travels. And LDL has some good purposes, but we all know that too much is, can get in our coronary vasculature, causing heart disease, our number one killer. Mm. And HDL, I look at it as kind of, I call it LDL's big brother, watching out to make sure he doesn't go places he's not supposed to. So HDL is our good cholesterol. Um, we always want to balance between the amount of the total cholesterol and have a good amount of HDL. You'll hear about people look at their um, total cholesterol to HDL ratio. That's letting them know, do I have enough of the good stuff? And unfortunately today, we're not only seeing people's bad cholesterol going up, we're seeing their good cholesterol go down. And that's just as concerning. So that's interesting because the levels are actually kind of opposite each other. Exactly. How important is it that we know our cholesterol levels? Oh, I think it's so important because like I said, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, these are diseases that are harming us and often we don't know it. They can have no symptoms. And so um, your cholesterol levels, both your HDL and your LDL, are major risk factors and I think everybody should know them. All right, well doctor, let's look, take a look at some of the <laughs> foods here. Of course, I migrated right to this side of the table <laughs> and everybody probably does, but this represents the bad cholesterols. Well, it, this are some of the ways that you can actually impact your cholesterol in a negative way. I mean, obviously right here we see all the really high fat food. When we talk about the cholesterol that actually harms our body, we're looking at primarily saturated fat. Mm. And so our saturated fat comes from our animal pro products, particularly our dairy and our cheese. Um, and then all these oils that we fry things in. So we've got fried chicken, everybody's gonna have that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> no, I'm well, decent. everybody wants that, yeah, but I'm, you know. No, I'm, I'm, I'm joking, but you know, our French fries, often the, those nuggets can be fried and, and bring up a lot of bad oils in. Um, I don't think people, this isn't to scare people that, oh my gosh, these things are gonna, you know, totally harm me if I touch a little. But unfortunately, our American diet really has changed and we're either eating these or we're coming to something like this. And over here, we're looking more at a really high carbohydrate meal and combined with fat. And what we're finding is that these high carbohydrate meals where we're not getting any protein, we're not getting any fiber from our vegetables, what's happening is it's causing our blood sugar to swing and that's tied to your HDL going down. Mm -hmm. And so when we get concerned about having enough of the good cholesterol, we not only look at getting good fats in the diet, but we've got to not eat so many high sugars in the diet. And I consider pancakes a sugar because it's carbohydrate and so we've got to watch you know, having a meal, maybe we could have had a small pancake, but let's put some good protein with it, um, make it a little healthier meal. All right, now let's move on to the healthier side of the board here. Well, actually, you've got uh, first, uh, this, oops, this is just, that. That uh, shows the artery just, there. Yeah, this is just showing an artery, and we've got some plaque buildup, and then as disease progresses, we got a stiffening of the entire wall with more plaque buildup, and obviously now we're almost occluding, and this is what you see in a coronary vessel that may be starting to occlude with plaque buildup and obviously if it does that we're at risk for angina and heart attack. Now can we reverse that effect? Well we can get rid of a lot of this inflammatory response once it's become a hard plaque we may not be able to get rid of that hard plaque but what we're finding is that there's inflammation around the plaque and the inflammation is really the dangerous part that makes that plaque at risk for we call it an unstable plaque mm -hmm. at risk for maybe a piece of it breaking off traveling downstream causing disease and inflammation really is being caused today I believe by that combination of our sedentary lifestyle we're not moving and we're eating in a, such a way that our blood sugar is swinging and then you add saturated fat it's it's a little bit of a recipe for disaster it is well speaking of recipe for good things here are some good things that that we should add into our diets what are we talking about here all right now we're getting for our good natural foods I have to start with our fruits and vegetables because these are the foods that are going to give us our good fiber our antioxidants um, they actually have cholesterol lowering properties they're things called plant sterols that actually um, help bring our total cholesterol down so they're not only adding the good things we need Fiber itself also helps 
drop cholesterol through binding to bile acids in the GI tract, and that lowers cholesterol. Um, if we look over here, now we can see a much healthier and lower calorie meal because also weight is impacting our risk of heart disease. And here we've got some nice turkey. I can touch this because it's not real. Right. <laughs> and, but it looks um, real. It does. It does. And a um, nice bowl of blueberries packed with antioxidants. That whole bowl of blueberries probably only has about 70 calories in it and um, is going to fill you up. And we've got some broccoli. Now put the egg over there because the egg has gotten you know, a lot of bad press throughout the years and it's starting to become vindicated recently. We're finding that the egg has a lot of, has some cholesterol in the yolk, which is why we get concerned about it. However, there are two types of cholesterol. There's cholesterol in food and cholesterol in our bloodstream. Cholesterol in food by itself, the research over the last two years is showing it may not be the culprit. Um, saturated fat, I think everybody agrees, is a much bigger culprit in the diet. And there's, if you got a good egg, one egg, it's not going to have a tremendous amount of saturated right. fat. And very quickly before we go, you brought the sneakers in, they, you said exercise is just as important as, as moderating our diet. Actually, to me, exercise is the number one driver of bringing your cholesterol down. We see people's cholesterol drop 100 points almost, I mean, daily we see that. And it's from the exercise. We get people eating healthy, but there's a genetic component to your cholesterol. And there's a genetic component that drives it up, and exercise is really the number one lifestyle thing we can do to bring it down. Thank you very much, Doctor. If you'd like to get more information on tools to monitor your cholesterol, just visit us online at WTVR.com slash VTM. Dr. Madge Zacharias, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Cheryl. You're very welcome. Right now, we want to get over to Carrie. Might be